You know, there are times I can only say, praise ye the Lord. So many times things happen all at the same time, and it's very easy to get frustrated. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed. It's very easy to say, why is this happening to me? But in the end, when we commit all the things unto the Lord, He makes it come to pass. When we trust in the Lord and lean not upon our own understanding, we can say hallelujah. Oftentimes we allow ourselves to be looking externally for answers that can only be found in the Bible. For example, I think it's irrefutable to say that the world is not in trouble. The world is in trouble. The world has been troubled since day one, since Adam and Eve have disobeyed the living God. When you think of the trouble today, I don't think the world has any has ever seen the kind of trouble the world is in today. Every dimension of our life, there's the word trouble. People are troubled. Governments are troubled. Systems are in trouble. Supply chains are in trouble. It just, it's troubled square. And yet, if we look at the scriptures very carefully, I think we'll get a very deep insight about where this trouble is coming from. Is it coming from governments? Is it coming from disease? Is it coming from, I don't know, I mean, there. When you watch the news and you and you listen to the media and you listen to the pundits, you seem to think that you know what, this man, this leader is causing the trouble. This political party, this political affiliation is causing the problem. By the way, if you're tuning in, welcome. This is the Christ Jesus College and Seminary, and Christ Jesus Chapel. And I warmly invite you to click and subscribe and click that notification bell and be, and be part of our worldwide Bible college and our local chapel here. I'm going to turn to a piece of scripture that you've probably read many times before. And we're going to go over just two other scriptures. And I think if you follow the train of thought for this week and next week, we're going to have some very keen insights as we approach Christmas. Let's look at the second chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, I have to think about this for a moment. For thousands of years, there have been prophets who have been prophesying through the power of the Holy Spirit, sent by God to God's people, making them aware that the Messiah is coming. God's going to keep his promise from Genesis 3.15. And there are exquisite milestones. There are exquisite signs to show and to point who that person is, who is the Christ. Let's begin. Now... I love Matthew. He's so precise. Now, when Jesus was born, where? In Bethlehem, the house of the bread. In Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. Herod was very busy refurbishing the temple for his own glory. Behold, there came wise men from the east, these are men more than likely that are coming from Iraq. These are men who have been foretold, foreducated by the prophet Daniel from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. Not the star of David. We've seen the star of Jesus and are come to worship him. Indeed, these are wise men. Now, this is the verse that really just gets me. When Herod the king, 
when Herod the king, now it's very understandable, when you hear that there's a king of the Jews that is born and you're the king, it's, I, can, I, can, I can picture this. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. There we go. There's the word again, trouble. He was troubled. What just floors me, I'm going to underline it here, and all of Jerusalem with him. Not some of Jerusalem, all of Jerusalem. And you would think, being under Roman occupation, with just being in, in the near vicinity of the temple, being God's chosen people, they would have been ecstatic, totally enamored with the fact that, yes, God has kept his promise and the Christ is born. But no, they're troubled. Just like the world is troubled today. And just for the sake of continuity, so we don't take any text out of context, verse 4, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes, I find this very interesting, the scribes of the people, not the scribes of the temple, it says the scribes of the people, together he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. This is amazing that wise men from the east are making King Herod fully aware that Christ is born and he rejects Christ. He rejects Christ. He rejects the Messiah. He rejects the will of God. He rejects the timing of God and he's troubled. And everyone else in Jerusalem, rather than rejoicing, they are also troubled. Now, there are many, many prophecies in, in the Old Testament that point to Jesus. Jesus is the center of prophecy. Jesus is the, gen, the, he's the centerpiece. Not Israel, not the church. It's Jesus. Jesus is the centerpiece of all prophecy. There are over 300 prophecies regarding Jesus. 70 of those prophecies were fulfilled in the last week of Jesus' life. Did you know that? Mathematically, statistically, impossible. But you know what? Even, even in the book of Proverbs, you find, get this, this is, this is blow your mind. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists, who has bound the waters in his garment, who hath established the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is his son's name? Did you get it? Right there in Proverbs. What is his son's name? If you can tell. Now, I'm going to read Psalm 2 to you so you can get the M.O., the Mobus Abarandi of the world today as it and the world previous and the world for whatever time is left. This is the Mobus Abarandi. And you need to understand this, especially as Christians and believers, so that you understand the motives, the 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 the, the, the thinking behind everything that's going on with this big reset, the agenda. There's an attitude. It's not an attitude of gratitude. It's an, there's an attitude of rebellion against the Christ, just as it was when he was born. They were troubled at his birth, and they're troubled that he's coming back. Jesus is coming back, my friends. There is a second coming, and it's great news for his children but not for the world. Listen to what Psalm 2 says. It's very revealing. You should take the time to really read it. It will really open your eyes and make you really appreciate. I mean, there's a lot of horrific things that are going on. 
there is not a lot of good news on the horizon, except for the fact that Jesus Christ is returning and we have the good news of the gospel. But look and listen to what these people are thinking. Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage? There's a rage in the world. The unsaved, the unbelievers, the people who do not accept Christ as Lord, they're in a rage. And why do the people imagine a vain thing? Their, their imagination is vain. They have rage and they have vain imagination. Now, there's, there's no coincidence in the second verse. The kings of the earth themselves. The kings of the earth themselves. We're talking about today. This, is, this verse is so prophetic. It's about every other kingdom in the past, and it's more so today. The kings of the world today and the rulers of the world today, they're in cahoots. They're in collusion. They're taking counsel together. What do you think all these big meetings around the world are all about? They're doing everything they can to prohibit... <laughs> You can't stop Jesus, my friends. The kings of the earth themselves and the rulers of the world, they're taking counsel together against two people. Listen to the verse. This is all in verse 2. Psalm 2.2. 2, against the Lord and against his anointed. Against Elohim, Adonai, and his anointed son. What are they saying? Let us break their bands asunder. We do not want to be subjugated to the kingship of Jesus Christ. That's what they're saying. And their actions, their motivations are clear, and their, their actions are crystal clear. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. We do not want to be under the authority of Jesus. We do not want Jesus to come back. The world is ours. Listen to verse 4. What is God's response to this? He that sitteth in heaven shall laugh. You can't plan against the Lord. There is no counsel against the Lord. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. You know why there's so much confusion? Do you know why there's everything is so confounded in the world today? Because God has allowed them a spirit of delusion. Verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. See, everyone in the world today is, God is love. Yeah, baby. I can love this rock and I can marry this rock and it's 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 an actual marriage. It might be a rocky marriage. It's everything about love and you know don't stop me from doing what, what I want to do. But he will speak in his wrath and he will vex them in his sore displeasure. See, God has made a decision and he's not going to change his mind. He says, I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's right. Zion belongs to Jesus. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said, Thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give unto thee the heathen, the entire world, for your inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. That is God's decision. And thou will break them with a rod of iron. Now, friends, there's a millennium coming where there will be complete peace on the earth. And Christ will be sitting on the throne as the king of the world. Verse 10. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Can't be more, you can't be more specific than that. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. And be instructed, O ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. This next verse reminds me of a scene in the movie Chosen. I'm not sure if it's very kosher, but they have Nicodemus kneeling before Jesus, kissing his hand and saying these words. 
kiss the sun. In the Hebrew, really, it's worship the sun. But kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. And in the movie, the series, The Chosen, Jesus responds to Nicodemus, and they both smile. Blessed are all they that put their trust in the Lord. Is your trust in the Lord today? It says here, blessed are they that put their trust in the Lord today. I know that my trust is in the Lord. I hope that your trust is in the Lord. Jesus is coming again. And that is what is Christmas for me. Christmas is not once a year. To me, Christmas is every day. Easter is every day. It's my birthday every day. I have every reason to be filled with joy and peace because I have the victory of Christ living within me. I pray that these words have been an encouragement to you and have given you instruction, wise, prudent instruction about what's really going on. There's a rebellion in the world today against God, and God has chosen his Son. And we who are in love with the Lord are waiting for his return. What a great day that will be. But until then, let us be busy sowing the seed. Let us be busy proclaiming the gospel. Let us be busy publishing the word of God. And let us be living epistles. Let us be let our lives be full of love and peace. That people will ask us why our lives are different so we can share the living message of Jesus. Well, I love you, and he loves us the most. He really do. He really does love you. He really does understand you. I hope you're taking the time to read your Bibles and pray and share your heart to the Lord. Surrender your lives to the Lord. Submit to the will of God, and you'll experience the peace that passes all understanding. And the joy, the joy of your salvation, which will be your strength. Your strength will be renewed like the mighty eagle. And don't let anyone, don't let anyone that's toxic in any way, shape, or form rob you from the presence of the Lord. Once again, have a blessed day in the Lord. And thanks again for joining us. Thanks for your prayers and all your wonderful emails of encouragement. I'm very blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.